us today. It's great to see Commissioner Thelman's cat make a guest appearance once again. That's awesome. Um, you've joined us for a work session for the Douglas County Board of County Commissioners. Um, just a note, at our work sessions, we don't make any decisions. It's for informational purposes only. We also don't take any public comment. If you would like to provide public comment on this item or any other item, we in, encourage you to attend our 530 business meeting. Um, with that, our um, work session today is about consolidated fire, fire district number one, and I'll turn it over to Sarah as she introduces our guests. Thank you, commissioners. Um, we, we, we proceeded with the creation of Consolidated Fire District Number 1 earlier this year. We, uh, we said we would be back to you this fall with an update as to our progress. Um, and I'm real excited about all the things that, we've, we are, that are underway and that we're making a lot of progress on um, in terms of the creation of the district. Um, I will turn it over to Chief Baxter, who will walk us through this presentation. Uh, while he is, is uh, getting ready to do that, one of the things I do want to say is that I, I'm incredibly grateful for his leadership in this process. It's been very helpful um, to just have someone who is, who is so focused on what the vision of this district is and, and has the relationships required to really bring people together. Um, to, to, to accomplish this task that we've really never been able to do um, uh, to, this time, to this date in Douglas County. And then also I wanna thank our internal team that's working really closely with um, Chief Baxter as, as they prepare to um, use some of the systems and internal processes and procedures that we have here at the county. And on that team um, are Michelle Spreer, our human resources director, Marnie Penrod, our deputy county clerk, and Kemi Owens, um, our budget manager. And I know there's others that uh, extensive teams of folks that work with those folks that have been working with Chief Baxter to get everything ready. So um, I wanna thank them for their work. Um, uh, to get this all ready to go uh, in January. So with that, uh, Chief, can I turn it over to you to get us started? Yeah, thank you, Sarah. I'm not sure if my, there. Uh, well, thank you commissioners for uh, sitting with us tonight and discussing consolidated fire district number one. Um, as Sarah has said, this has been, um, this has been quite an adventure for, for this year. Uh, we've worked hard. Um, I do want to start off with uh, Chief Filkin sends his apologies. Uh, he's not able to attend this meeting to a prior commitment. And Chief Wayne Riley um, just informed me that his AT&T line was cut. And so he will not have service until six o'clock. So he is unable to attend. And I'm sure Chief Snodgrass uh, was running probably a few minutes late from work. He's supposed to pop in on this um, adventure as well. Um, but I will say, you know, I struggled uh, with this, this presentation in about 17 different formats um, and, and just trying to figure out how to pass on so much information um, over the last um, really 10 months. Um, that that we've done and with this little amount of time frame we could we could spend i can spend an hour just on the on the first slide and 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 going over some of this stuff and as sarah said um you know the internal team marnie penrod and um michelle spears uh cammy owens brooke uh julie jacob uh julie Dahlum, uh Julie Klaus, I think she has a new last name now, um, but uh, oh, shoot, there's there's so many more that without their their help and their input, we would never be as far as as we are today. Um, so, with that, uh, do I share my screen or do you have this already? I think you should share your screen. Okay, no, I just wanted to make sure. And make sure I'm sharing the right thing. There you go. 
Okay, do you see the PowerPoint presentation? It says Board of County Commissioners work session. Okay. Yes, uh, and Chief, Chief Baxter, while you have that screen up, I just wanna compliment you publicly on your artwork. Uh, that's, I think that's really, it says a lot for, you know, uh, knowing what some of that means, um, what the number means. Um, you did a, an awesome job on that. Well, thank you. That was, uh, it's, it's a work in progress. And so um, it, it's taken a lot of time and we appreciate that. Um, you know, that that's, that's one of our representations. That's, that's our trademark. That's who we are. Uh, so we wanted that, uh, that logo to, to represent us. Um, and, and the uh, phrase in the center, uh, the non CB said on the this, um, that's not, that means uh, not for one, but for all. And so we kind of felt that that was pretty fitting for uh, the consolidated fire district since, since we are an auto and mutual aid company for um, the entire county as well. So I'm trying to, okay. So I just wanted to kind of run through a, a quick overview of Consolidated Fire District 1. Um, just kind of give you guys just a, a little bit of insight uh, that went into this, because this all goes into this planning process uh, that we're trying to do to gear up for January 1st. Um, 228 square miles, that's our, that's our borders. Um, north to south, east to west, uh, we encompass 228 square miles of Douglas County. Uh, the census isn't completely accurate just yet, but we're looking at an approximate population of about 10,000 uh, people that will serve. Um, some of the other main factors, you know, 7, 000, over 7,000 acres of lake, um, 85 shoreline miles, 47 miles of river. There's 26 miles of the Kansas River that runs through our, our district and 21 miles of the Wakarusa River. Um, there's going to be approximately 100 miles of hiking and biking trails. Um, and then, as I said before, the auto and mutual aid within all of Douglas County, we're a resource for, for every agency out there as well. Um, and so this, this becomes important because this is who we're serving. This is the population. This is the area. This is the terrain. This is this is everything that encompasses an all hazards department. So I feel it's it's important to include this information so that everybody has a big picture of. It's more than just responding to a house. You know, when you when you're talking a hundred miles of hiking and biking trails, um, and some of them are are fairly remote. Uh, there's no access by vehicles, so. Our resources we're coming into this district with um, five divisions, and, and I'll kind of explain the divisions here uh, shortly in a, in a slide or two, uh, but we'll have 10 fire stations, a total of 38 vehicles, um, and those are broken down into 10, 10 engines, uh, seven tenders, and the tenders are the trucks that haul the water, uh, 14 brush trucks, four squads, which we utilize for medical response, and then a, a all-terrain vehicle or a gator. And right now, we're currently sitting at about 103 firefighters for the district. So as you can see, just in that, you know, Consolidated Fire District 1 um, is going to be a, a fairly significant uh, department within Douglas County, uh, not just for the square miles, but between the shorelines and the rivers and, and the apparatus and the personnel, um, there's a lot that goes within the, uh, Consolidated Fire District 1. This next slide is a map, and in the shaded areas, um, with the exception of what is in the, in the shaded in the blue, that's the city of Lawrence, but that is the boundaries of Consolidated Fire District 1. And as you see, there's divisions within there, and those divisions represent current township lines um, or boundaries uh, within those townships. And we're going in a route of divisions within the district um, to be more effective in our span of control 
Um, we didn't we didn't necessarily want to associate with um, names per se anymore. We're, we're a consolidated fire district. We're moving towards that direction. Um, and so we broke everything down into divisions and the numbers that you see represent our current uh, department numbers as they stand. So division 11 is Wakarusa um, and our numbers all start with 11, uh, 1131, 1142, personnel are the same. Uh, division 13 is Eudora Township, 16 is Clinton Township, 14 is Kanawaka and Division 15 is LeCompton. So as I mentioned, we started this process and probably it was around November of 2019, uh, the five fire chiefs, uh, well, four fire chiefs, because I was, I was a chief of one of the other departments as well. Um, we tried to come up with a way that would bring unity within the fire service in Douglas County that brought a safer environment for our volunteers that provide a, a, a high level of, of service. And what we came up with is something that we've been going back and forth on for the last 15 years. And that was um, the unification of, of departments. And with that, that's that brought forward the county commission and the ball rolling to get this created. And so once that was insured and we had the resolutions in place, you know, these list of goals started and, and this, this list only scratches the surface. Um, you know, on one side we have payroll, policy handbook, volunteer pay, IT, public works, health insurance, retirement, and these are all things that, as we said, that internal team with, with Marnie and Julie and, and Michelle and, and all those gals within payroll and stuff, they've been working very, very hard to try to get us online with this, um, meeting these goals. And we sat down early on, um, Marnie Penrod spearheaded a uh, transition team um, and said, hey, I think we need to meet on a regular basis. And so every two weeks we have uh, meetings for the, uh, we call it the Consolidated Fire District Transition Team. Um, and we discuss all of these internal things and what needs to be done and timeframes and set timelines and, and so forth and internal goals. So that has really helped keep us on track with all of this. Um, as far as the internal component goes. On the other side, you have organizational structure and, and the mission statement. Um, my belief coming into this was, uh, one, I had to have my structure in place. Um, and then from there, you know, mission statement and core values, we had to understand who we were and, and what we were here for. Uh, before we can go forward with anything else. Um, and so uh, we had operational procedures, training, SOPs, SOGs, external and internal stakeholders that, that we had to um, work with. And so that's kind of where we started as far as a list of goals. Um, I know some may say, well, it's not a whole bunch, but a lot of these things we're still working on. We're still trying to, to beat those deadlines. Um, I think we're in a pretty solid foundation right now. Um, I will say that in meeting these goals and working through these goals, the, the volunteers um, have been awesome. Um, everybody has kind of joined together. Um, we've, we recognized early on um, by July of this year that, hey, this is, this is a district. Um, it's going to be this way January 1st. And so everybody started aligning as a district really back in June and in, in, uh, July. Um, we started forming our training and having uh, unified training at that time. Um, everybody came together and um, 
We started discussing how we can make this operationally better today, um, even though we're working with different budgets, different uh, leadership, different township boards. And so everybody's been really receptive of all of these components and in, in trying to, to hit all of our benchmarks. This is our organizational chart as we will sit as a consolidated fire district number one in Douglas County. Um, as you see, it starts at the top. The Board of County Commissioners is, is the board that represents us. Uh, we have our county administrator, chief and deputy chief, and then administrative divisions and training divisions and operations divisions. And I'll kind of go back to these a little bit. Um, you know, to start this organizational chart off, um, we went to, I went to each fire chief, e each current township and in, in the Compton Fire District one chief and said, here is, here's my vision. This is, this is what I'd like to see. Um, I need uh, three to four strong leaders um, that really think that you think that will, that will help pull this together. And so within those, those departments kind of pick those leaders um, for this new organizational chart. And we form division officers, captains, and lieutenants from there. Um, we also, another unique thing that we, none of the departments currently have is a training division or an administrative division. And currently training, training is done um, usually the chief or, or another officer just picks things. Um, we train on it and, and try to maintain uh, the best capabilities that we can through that. We identify training as uh, a weakness um, because it's such a large group um, covering such a large area we felt as though we needed a couple people to spearhead this and keep it online and look at goals and visions and, and strengths and weaknesses. So um, we did put a training division in and then an administrative division, talking to Chief Filkins and Chief Riley, um, where they fit in in the new consolidated fire district. And, and both of those both of those chiefs wanted a role. They wanted to still participate, but they also wanted a way to slowly migrate out. They both want to retire in the near future um, and I don't know, maybe go fish or, or travel, but um, so they didn't want a, a big role and responsibility, but they still wanted to participate. And so we felt the administrative division would be good for them to help fill and both of those, um, Dwayne and Wayne, will be assisting with grants. Uh, they're currently right now, they're, uh, they're looking for grants. Um, any, any type of free money that we could come across to help offset costs, um, that's what they're digging into. Um, they're helping with the transition of bills. So all of our, our department bills, whether it's utilities or cable bills or phone bills. We have to align all those underneath the new consolidated fire district number one. And so they're gathering those that information and, and helping to make that transition with all of those. Um, and then the divisions, um, as you see, you know, division 11 is Wakarusa and that's kind of over at its on the side there. And, and the main reason why is, um, it is an operations division, but it also aligns with our internal partners of payroll and human resources, because that's where all of the full-time personnel are at. And so Division 11 is kind of like the administrative division of the, um, the agency as well. And then we have 13, 14, uh, 15, and 16. Um, each one with the exception of 16 has a division officer. Um, the feeling on that was, is that it is a very small area as in, in terms of personnel um, and, the, and the number of resources there. 
And so to manage it, we felt that a division officer from Division 14 was able to uh, help with that span of control and, and was able to take that in. So we took two of the smaller divisions and kind of blended them <clears throat> together, excuse me. And that's how we kind of came up with our organizational chart and in the flow of that. Any questions over any of that? As I said before, I felt it was important as a agency that we understood who we were and, and why we're here. Um, and so that's where the first thing that we did once we got uh, our organizational chart put together, who those those officers were going to be as far as division officers and, and captains and lieutenants. We have been sitting down for the last, uh, well, since August, we have sat down as an officers group and had um, bi-weekly bi meetings discussing this transition and, and how we can make it successful, what needs to be done. And the first thing we did is we sat down and, and drew up a mission statement and what our core values were. Uh, the motto is, is, is also was completed and that's on the, on the uh, badge as well. Um, but this is what we, we felt is, was us. Um, this is what we stand for. Um, and so that's how we came up with this mission statement and these core values. The next thing that we did as an officers group is we kind of sat down and we, we basically did like a SWOT analysis. And, and you know, my, my, um, my challenge to them was is to not look at current standards or current ways that we are doing it, but how is this going to look when we become Consolidated Fire District 1 effective January 1st? And what are some of those challenges we're going to come across and our strengths and our weaknesses? Because I didn't think it was fair that we brought that individualism in because we're going to change completely. Our dynamics has already changed as, as a department um, as we grow with this. So these are some of the things. Uh, there was there's a little bit more on the list, but these were some of the the main things that came out of that SWOT analysis. Um, you know, strengths as a district, that standardization, and I think we we kind of identified that even back in November of 2019. Uh, moving forward with this, that that standardization was going to be a big strength for any department. Um, and that includes procedures, the way our incident command is ran, all of our techniques and operations, equipment. Then were a lot of things that we struggle with currently is we don't communicate on equipment as independent agencies. And one person buys a truck, a setup a certain way, and then another department buys a truck and sets it up a different way. But the two they don't blend together and then we don't cross train on it. And so with this, we're gonna have a large amount of equipment and it'll be standardized in, in how that, that equipment grows. Um, you know, weaknesses, uh, the big ones is the transition timing. Um, and, and not that, we can't get it done. It's just, it's a lot, there's a lot to do in a short amount of time. And as I said, I really feel as though the volunteers, the township board members, uh, the district, the fire district one board members, all of those individuals and, and, and boards have kind of stepped up and they, they said, hey, what can we do to help? And they've been, they've been motivated. Um, they've supported their, their current leadership, their current fire chiefs. And if we need something, um, they're trying to make room in the budget to get that to make us stronger as, a, as an agency. Um, bringing personnel on the same page when we're volunteers. 
it's difficult sometimes because we can't rely on a set standard of who comes um, to certain trainings. Everybody has lives right now, um, you know, baseball games and, and, and school events and all these things start taking place with these young families and training the fire department kind of gets pushed to the side a little bit. And so it's hard for us to get all of our volunteers in the same room and start getting training on the same page. Um, so that was another weakness that was really identified. You know, our opportunities, as we said, uh, greater service to the public we serve, uh, to other departments, we believe we're gonna be stronger. We've already demonstrated internally ourselves that, that we are stronger through our training. Um, as I said, we've been doing this since June or July as an as a agency and aligned all of our training together. And so, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my lights. Uh, my, our training has really helped us in, in providing that. Um, take on a more productive and effective role. Um, in in all facades of the fire and medical um you know as as a smaller agency it's difficult um to get people to training and to to be as complete as a department as you want to be because we don't know if it's one person that's going to show up or if it's 20 people that's going to show up um, and we believe that this is really going to help us uh, bring on that more productive and effective role. Um, you know, threats and, you know, the impact of the naysayers inside and outside the department is, is always, there's people that, I don't know if they want to see us fail, but they don't believe that this is going to be a, a success. Um, they're afraid of change. And so, uh, we we have to stay positive within ourselves, uh, within that agency, and, and promote that positivity, um, and and just prove those individuals wrong. Uh, communication, another huge uh, threat, and and the reason why is 228 square miles, uh, volunteers, um, you know, getting everybody on the same page is is just going to be difficult. Um, and then ongoing, you know, technology is ever changing and just trying to keep up with that technology um, and the costs that are associated with it. These are all things that the that the group came up with. Um, this is nothing I did myself. This was as a as a group. They sat down and, and, and identified these things. And so to me, this was this was a huge thing to get everybody in the same room and, and thinking in the same direction and on the same page. As I said, we started um, training. Um, that was that was one of the things we identified early on that can set the ball in motion. Um, it was, it could be our largest hurdle. Um, so we did start the district training in July and we've had great participation with that. Um, we've had, um, it, it's been really a blessing because in past trainings, as I've mentioned, we don't know if we're getting five or 10 or 15 members. And so a lot of times it was hard to run evolutions um, without uh, burning out those volunteers because they'd have to do the same evolution over and over with a different team because we were short, so short staffed. And now with the numbers, um, we're able to divide out. We've got uh, great participation and those numbers were able to, we're able to run these evolutions and more participation means people actually do less work in a training environment because there's more hands-on as far as uh, setup and cleanup and, and everything that goes along with the training evolution. Um, you know, with training, we went, as it states in the top, we getting back to the basics. One of the things we identified with training was 
how we come from different backgrounds and a uh, different thought process. And so my goal was, is to get everybody on that same page. And so we went back to the very basics of firemanship. Um, what we learn in Academy and Fire One in the basic training, we started with that. We didn't start with anything complicated. We just started with how do you pull a hose from a truck? How do you get water from a truck to the end of the hose? And I think that really helped because nobody felt um, nobody felt like they uh, had to sit back because they didn't know something and they were afraid to raise their hand type of thing. Um, everybody was on the same playing field. And from there, we've, we have built layers into this. So as we've mastered one component, we brought another layer into it that just evolved that training and got us deeper and more um, effective in what we're doing. The other component of training is creating an annual training plan. And that goes back to the communication component as being, um, could be a weakness, it could be a threat. Um, there's a lot of things that, that you know, communication entails, but <clears throat> trying to get everybody on that same level playing field, um, we had to come back and, and create an annual training plan. So currently we have, and it, it's in its rough draft form. I was hoping to include it tonight, but it just wasn't enough to, to be there. Um, but we have about a 15 page document that basically outlines the 2021 training plan for Consolidated Fire District 1. It tells us what our goals and objectives are, um, what we're trying to meet, and then it outlines the, the monthly training topics with the objectives. And we have broken it down into different categories as far as department training, medical training, um, driver operator training, hazmat training, and technical rescue training. And so it gives those volunteers um, a, a document that they can come back to and they can say, hey, this is the training I need to be participating in this month. Um, it's already outlined for them. Um, they know ahead of time so they can hopefully do some pre-study on it. Um, but it just gives them that that ability to uh, for that communication to be across the board um, from from east to west on the uh, on the border lines of this is what we're doing this year. And so I think that's going to be a huge component in success as we move forward into 2021. Some of the other things that uh, we identified as an officer's group, um, equipment, um, from the training we've already, you know, conducted, we've identif we identified that we have a lot of differences in equipment, uh, the setup of that equipment and deployment models, how we operate, uh, how we take that, that equipment off the truck. And some people may look at you and say, well, it's a hose, you pull it off and you pull it to the front door. Well, I can tell you there's probably about 30 different ways to load hose onto a truck. And each way has a unique, it's unique on how you deploy that, that hose bundle. Um, and so when, when we initially started, we had firefighters from division 13 trying to pull hose from division 14's truck and we were not successful. So then were some of the things we identified in standardizing that, um, how that hinders that our effective operations, it slows us down. So we recognize that from past experiences, um, emergency calls, structure fires, and so forth, we looked at 
what could we have done better? Um, we identified things that we could have done better to help us in what we were trying to accomplish uh, for that call. And that equipment setup um, was one of those things to help effective operations. Uh, we've already, um, as, a, as independent agencies, but we've aligned as a district um, in setting our apparatus up in similar fashion through the training that we've already conducted and in the inventories and stuff that we've done, we've identified that and everybody's made that alignment so far. Um, every department has prioritized the equipment needs that we need to align as a district that would make our transition the smoothest and most effective. Um, and as I said, the township boards have been awesome in working with those those fire chiefs and recognizing the need for this um and a lot of them have purchased new hose or some new nozzles and just some new equipment just to make it more standardized for our success on january 1st I feel like I'm talking, no questions from anybody. Okay. SOPs. Um, SOPs were another uh, communication uh, device um, that, that we felt was gonna be very critical in the success of this agency. Um, so the SOPs are our standard operating procedures. And that outlines for every member of the department um, how we how we function as an agency. And it covers everything from um, how to become a volunteer all the way to retirement of a volunteer um, to include fire ground activities um, and everything in between. And so those are Another critical component that we feel um, was needed, and some of the agencies have had some outlines and some different SOPs in the past. Um, we're currently in the stage where we are rewriting all of our SOPs, and we believe um, by December 15th, we will have a finalized version of Consolidated Fire District 1's SOPs uh, to be out for uh, publication to the volunteers. And that's really going to help us when, when we talk about providing that structure, uh, emergency response operations, administrative functions. Um, it helps our standardized standardization of activities. Uh, we know those, those roles and actions that need to be taken through these SOPs, um, provides our guidance for the department. Um, the other great thing about SOPs is their training and, and their training and reference document. So if you ever have a question on how something should be done, it's pulling out that, that SOP and looking it up. Um, so these, these are things that these, these volunteers will have access at their homes, um, with them at the stations, um, hopefully an electronic version on a, on a website or something will be available in the near future. Um, and then it helps with that communication as far as, you know, our legal and administrative requirements, our policies, um, and, you know, to sum it up, everybody's reading from the same sh sheet of music. And so we've identified that as well uh, as being something to really help unify us coming into January 1st. <clears throat> you know, I mentioned um, in our list of goals and stuff, um, external stakeholders. Um, one of the things that we did is we identified Clarion Springs EMS is currently uh, they're, a, they're an agency that is kind of by themselves. Um, they really don't have a department. They don't have a station. Um, they're quasi funded through the county and then what they get out of, out of volunteer donations. And Clarion Springs EMS is, is um, will be 
part of Consolidated Fire District 1 uh, moving into January 1st. And so we looked at what is it that Clarion Springs EMS does in their coverage area and uh, how they serve the, the community of Douglas County. And so we looked at our, our map and, and kind of said, well, this is great. Uh, we, can, we can do all of these things, but wouldn't it make sense if we had this other agency to assist with it? And that's where Willow Springs comes in. Um, I had a meeting with uh, Chief uh, Lyle Bolin um, of Willow Springs Fire District 3 and, and just had a conversation about what his thoughts were as far as roles and responsibilities moving forward after January 1st and what would he like to see. Um, and through that discussion, we established that uh, Willow Springs could provide that service that Clarion Springs EMS was is currently providing uh, as far as medical first response to that area. And um, that was something that I, I believe they're excited about doing. Um, and so through that, we've assisted uh, Chief Bolin and Fire District 3 with um, acquisition of a medical response vehicle, uh, working with Sarah um, in the county on EMS agreements and uh, getting medical supplies. Um, and then we'll continuous work with Chief Bolin in assisting with transi transitions and then any other additional needs that they may have. And that even comes after January 1st of our auto and mutual aid agreements with them um, and, and assisting them with response. The other, the other stakeholder that we looked at was Marion Township, um, which is currently served, uh, a, a large portion of Marion Township is currently served by um, Osage Fire District number four. And so we set up a meeting with uh, Chief Mitchell from Osage County um, on continuity of services for Marion Township. Um, and, you know, everybody agreed that services to citizens was first and foremost. And so my role in that was, was trying to find out how that service to the citizens was best served. Um, what, what was it that Osage County wanted from Consolidated Fire District number one? What did they need? And could we meet those needs? Um, and so through that, we did establish a response matrix that we believe provides for the best coverage for the citizens um, and it assists Osage uh, with response. So they're not going uncovered by anything. Um, Osage is still covering it. And then between Consolidated Fire District 1 and Willow Springs, we're enhancing that response um, within, their, within their boundaries. Um, to make sure that those citizens receive uh, the, the best care that they can. And so I believe that helped to establish a partnership. Um, and, and that was really bu built on uh, communication for the needs of citizens, the agencies and responders. We've done some other things with some other external stakeholders. I believe those were probably the two larger things um, when it comes to that. And as we get into this, then we're all kind of things we did operationally. And as I discussed in the beginning, thanking uh, those, those gals in, in payroll and HR and, and um, treasurers off, I mean, just everybody uh, that has helped with that and, and payroll, you know, they had their work cut out for them. Um, this is a new agency. Um, it's something that the county has never um, never done before. And we're taking on what we call 2912 employees. Um, and the reason why we call them 2912 employees is because on an average, most people work 2,080 hours annually, 40 hour work weeks. Firefighters, typically we work 24 hours, 
And in an average year, we work 2,912 hours. And so that's where the 2912 comes from. And the labor laws have a lot of different language written in them for that cover um, 2912 employees differently than 2080 employees. And so we work both through the federal and the state labor authorities um, to ensure that we are in compliance with all of our labor laws. Uh, we did not want to anybody to come back and say, you can't do this or you should have done this. Um, so we we met with uh, the Kansas Department of Labor. Uh, we met with the Federal Department of Labor. We had meetings upon meetings um, and figured out exactly where we could go and how we needed to set this up. And so those gals did a great job. Um, I believe they pretty much will have the payroll components set up um, in, a, in, in the system for our 24-hour employees, our 2912 employees. And then <clears throat> volunteers, um, you know, that was another dynamic. Um, I know you put the, the term volunteers in there, but then you say pay. And we do, there is some compensation for the volunteers and, and you know, it's really to help pay for their, their fuel. It's, it's to help offset some of their costs. Um, a lot of times my volunteers, you know, they spend it on meals and stuff at the station. And, and so um, nobody is getting rich off volunteer pay at all but it's a way to recognize them and how could we be in compliance with labor laws, um, county laws. I mean, everybody that was involved and pay these volunteers, but still do it cost effectively. Um, there, there's a fee there. There's, it costs money to write checks and we recognize that. And through our meetings with the, with the labor folks, um, we, identified that we can pay these volunteers on a semi-annual or an annual basis and still be in compliance with the labor laws. And um, that, is, that is what the volunteers are currently kind of used to. Um, for the most part, uh, township boards will cut one check uh, once a year. Um, it's typically around this time of year and it just helped it's, it's a couple hundred dollars to help offset uh, some Christmas expenses or uh, anything like that that they have. Um, and so that was, that was a big component with payroll. There was a lot of work that went into that. So kudos and hats off to those ladies there. HR department, um, another big one, um, you know, Another thing that the county never had was job descriptions for firefighters. Um, so we had to research and look and identify job descriptions that fit Douglas County and fit Consolidated Fire District number one. Um, we were successful in that and Michelle has worked diligently and very hard in, in helping create those and then review and revised um, an employee handbook that aligned with county policies. Um, we want it to be as close to what every county employee does with, within our 2912 employees, you know, there, there's some differences in, in how they're paid and, and stuff like that. So, um, that is a work in progress. And I believe we are pretty close to finalizing. I met with Michelle today, as a matter of fact, um, in finalizing that employee handbook for uh, um, to be forwarded to the Board of County Commissioners for approval. So should be looking forward to that. Um, also working on the health benefits for fire department employees through the HR department and identifying the most cost effective, um, what's good for the employees and so forth when it comes to uh, health benefits. So Michelle has, has really been uh, stepping up and really helped this department out quite a bit working through all of those documents with me. 
County Legal. Um, another big one, um, Eric at, uh, at the legal department. Um, he has finalized the lease agreements with the townships. He's got them in final version form. And we're getting ready to deliver those to the townships for review and signature on leasing current buildings and properties uh, for consolidated fire district number one. And then they're also working a draft um, of equipment transfers with the township. So we're trying to make sure that legally everything's covered and, and nothing gets unturned. Um, and we're hoping um, from, from those standpoints that in November, the, the lease agreements are finalized and then the equipment transfers are going out shortly after that or at the same time if, if Eric can get those completed in final version. IT department. Um, I established an email that Sarah really liked. Uh, she had a, my, my other email was, it was kind of different. It didn't have my name. It didn't have no, unless you knew ETFD 1300, what it stood for and me, then you never knew what my email was. And so that was the first thing that we did with IT department was establish that email, um, attended my initial county IT training. And then currently I'm working with the IT department um, on evaluation for what is needed at the fire station as far as equipment so that we can tap into the intranet, um, uh, the county resources and be able to do our NOVA time and, and all of our payroll and everything like that. So Jim and his group, um, have a plan in place for that. I've, I've talked to them several times and uh, they're working on that. And I believe that is going to be finalized here coming up in the, in the next 30 or 45 days. Public works. Um, early on, uh, I met with, um, with the retired public works director. Um, and he brought Chad Boyd in knowing that um, he was retiring now. And so I've been meeting with Chad and Doug on a, on a, I've met with them three or four times now, um, discussing maintenance schedules and, and what's best for uh, the county and CFD number one, um, access for fuels. All of those things needed to be, have to be reconstructed as a district because right now we for my example is, is as Wakarusa Township, we, we have a Wakarusa Township account. My road shop utilizes that account and, and the fire department does. Um, and so how can we separate that? Where can we get fuel from? And we have a process for that and it's been pretty much well finalized um, through public works and they have a, um, they have the means and uh, the scheduling uh, to assist with um, some, some light inspections and repairs of the fire apparatus as, as they become, uh, as, as that's needed. So Public Works has is, is been helping us out and, and identifying some of those things as well. Before I go into the next slide, as I said, external and internal stakeholders. Um, I, I just want everybody to understand, I could probably go for about 30 minutes just talking about public works in itself. That's not payroll. I can go in payroll for hours um, and, and, and all the work that's gone into that. But I just wanted to give the commission a, a broad update on what we look like as Consolidated Fire District 1 um, on this date and moving into January 1st. The next retirement, we did have a little hiccup on this and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of refer back to Sarah um, and, and kind of have her discuss more on the retirement factor because currently 
Walker's employees are Capers members, and um, there there is a premium difference in them. And we intended our our intention was is staying as as Capers members, and so. Uh, but through state statute and meeting with the state and after about two and a half months of, of arguing back and forth, there was finally a ruling on it. And I'm going to let Sarah talk about that a little bit more. Thanks, Chief. Um, yeah, as, as Chief set up, uh, we initially, when we approached this, our assumption was is that uh, the current employees would be able to retain their CAPERS membership um, when they went to the new consolidated fire district number one. And that really is based on um, anytime you have something new created, CAPERS lets you decide if you want to be CAPERS or KPNF. And so that's really where our assumption came from is that this was a new district um, and that they would begin, they would be allowed to select where they wanted to be and that they could elect to stay CAPERS. Well, through those, you know, and, and I, through those many, many conversations that our payroll team and chief um, had with CAPERS about our affiliation, it really, it's not quite that simple. Um, even though they are a separate taxing district because their EIN, so their tax EIN number falls under the counties so that they can be, um, so that there can be one, so that they can be in the county's financial system so that we can help manage payments so that we can help handle all of those back office functions for them because they're in essence um, under that tax ID number of the counties, they don't get a choice. Um, it's it's not that they're new, it's that they're joining an existing CAPERS and KPNF organization. And then if you're an organization that already has KPNF, like we do, um, then you don't get to pick. Um, and so uh, Douglas County has an affiliation with KPNF for law enforcement and fire and a fire affiliation that was retained on our books from uh, back when uh, Doug, uh, Douglas County managed the Douglas County Ambulance Service, formerly known as DCAS, for those of you that have been around a long time. Um, so what that means is that these, uh, the, the, and Chief, correct me, we're talking about six total, six employees. It, <clears throat> five in 2021, correct. Right. Correct. So five and twenty five employees in 2021 will transition from CAPERS to KPNF. What that means is, um, and in a lot of ways, that's a significant benefit to the employees. Uh, their retirement that they have access to will be substantially uh, much more enhanced than their uh, potential CAPERS and, and a retirement will be. Uh, they will have to contribute a little more upfront, but uh, the retirement benefit is, is significantly more um, robust than what CAPERS retirement is. Um, but what that also means in the meantime is that there's a pretty significant um, delta from what we were envisioning that we, that these, that the Consolidated Fire District number one would be contributing as the employer on behalf of these employees to their KPR, KPNF retirement. And that Delta is around, uh, our current estimate is about $42,000 a year um, over what we had planned. Um, you know, at this point, I don't really feel like there's a whole lot um, we've sort of exhausted all of our opportunities with KPNF to, to try to uh, really appeal or change that designation. I think we just really need to now prepare for um, what this would look like into 2021. And, and you know, I think as Chief has, has alluded to when we talked about at budget time, you know, we knew this budget with a, um, with the mills uh, that that are, you know, are to the mills set for the Consolidated Fire District were pretty tight. Um, but we know there's because there's a lot of upfront costs that the fire district is assuming um, with some various lease and, and uh, lease arrangements that are being inherited from the from the townships that uh, we really do anticipate that pretty quickly, you know, in the next two to five years, those that will have some that will be less of a strain on on the C, uh, CFD one budget than it current than it will be in 2021. In addition to that, over time, the valuation of the district will grow. Um, and, you know, then there'll be more funds available to do so. So 
it, what I would like to recommend to the commission is that uh, the county plan for a transfer, which we had already planned for to cover the uh, volunteer payments that were the responsibility. The county has always traditionally paired, prepared. Uh, in addition to that, um, an additional transfer to help offset uh, the cost of this transition from CAPERS to KPNF. Um, I don't think that action needs to be taken this fiscal year. Um, what, you know, the district isn't official, officially active until 2021. So my recommendation will be is that we'll continue to monitor this situation and determine really what that cost will be. And as we prepare the 2022 budget um, and we reestimate the 21 budget while we're in it, that we prepare for, for that change. Um, I do think that there are you know, there are some factors associated with their health insurance that might uh, turn out better than estimates had prepared that might lower that total impact of that cost. Um, so I think, I, you know, I think there's a few other factors in play there. In addition to that, I think the county is anticipating that we will receive, um, we'll have lower expenses for the liability insurance that we carry for current for currently for volunteer fire departments and uh, volunteer uh, first responders. So I do think that that will help um, offset what that impact would be on the overall county budget. Are there questions about that or do the commissioners have concerns? So, okay, then, you know, I, I turn it back to you, Chief, if there's anything else we want to cover here. No, uh, I, you know, again, I want to I want to thank everybody internally and externally that has, has, has helped with this. As I said in the beginning, uh, Chief Vilkins had a prior commitment and could not make it. He sent his, his apologies and, and Chief uh, Wayne Riley um, had internet problems that were out of his control. They both, uh, both of those uh, chiefs uh, wanted me just to put a statement uh, to the commission and Chief Wayne Riley said that um, the attitude at the Compton Fire District number one uh, was very positive um, and everybody was looking forward to the transition and that um, everybody is working as a unified front with that. And Chief Vilkins uh, said that he personally was pl uh, pleased with the progress and believes it's already successful. And both of those individuals uh, said, feel free to reach out to them um, it, you know, for any other questions or comments uh, since they couldn't be here tonight. And then Chief Dennis Snodgrass is uh, attending the Zoom meeting now. So um, I'd like to see if he had any comments that he would like to also plug in as well. This, uh, okay, I think I'm on. Uh, I just want to tell the commissioners thank you. Uh, thanks to all the staff and administration who have uh, helped make this a success. Uh, we told you in the beginning of all this that uh, we saw huge gains when uh, Clinton Township, Eudora Township, and Wakarusa Township started training together over a year ago. And it's probably been 18 months now, I'm losing track of time, but uh, we saw significant uh, increases in our ability to fight fire, uh, organize on the fire ground and have effective change for the community uh, when we started making these changes. And I was confident those changes would carry through uh, as we added uh, LeCompton and Ken Waka, and I couldn't be happier the way things are going. Uh, Chief Baxter and I have been working together for quite a while. We started on the Douglas County Rapid Intervention Team. Uh, through that uh, success, uh, we then got together and, and decided we could bring Clinton and uh, Wakarusa and Eudora together. Uh, we did that with great success. And now we're starting to already see uh, great success in the consolidation of bringing on the other two departments and uh, our ability to affect the safety of our firefighters uh, and the public uh, has already dramatically increased. And so uh, we greatly support all of you or appreciate all of your support. Commissioners, that's what I have for an update. Um, 
like I said, there's been a lot of uh, investment in this consolidated fire district, uh, both from the volunteers, from internal, external stakeholders, uh, you know, township boards. And so far, you know, we are, we are very being very successful in this. Um, and if you have any questions, I'd, I'd entertain an answer or um, we can go eat a steak dinner. Um, so uh, I, I don't really have a question. Uh, well, I guess w one question and then a comment. I, I would like to know, so you have 103 volunteers now, and I guess I'd like to know what, with the current um, number of divisions, are you at the number of volunteers that you need or are you in a recruiting mode? And if so, how do you get the word out uh, in the community and who's eligible to be a volunteer firefighter? I mean, do they have to be living in the township or rural people or I just, I think it'd be helpful for folks to know. Oh, sure. Be um, part of yeah. Um, we're always looking for volunteers. Uh, volunteerism is, is a revolving door. Um, everybody has families and other commitments. And so we see volunteers come around for some for a year, two, three, four years, and then they, they go back out. And so we're always taking, uh, we're always recruiting. Um, I don't know if it's been the increase in um, chatter because this consolidated fire district um, but in the last couple of weeks, it's, it's been two to three every week have come in for applications. Um, and we will continue filling those, those applications. Um, anybody can be a volunteer, whether you live or reside within Douglas County. Uh, I have volunteers currently that live in Olathe and Overland Park. Um, but they come in and they do station time, um, and help out and they're around as much as they can. They put in quite a few hours um, just sitting around cleaning station. So um, they can stop by the station at any time um, or they can call uh, the Walkers to Fire Station and get an application. Um, we're usually, somebody's here. Uh, we're staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, unless we're on a call. Uh, people are free to come by and uh, pick up an application. We are just getting ready to transition to, um, I've already transitioned our Facebook page from Walker is a Township to Consolidated Fire District number one. And so we're doing the same thing with some of our forms and um, the application page is getting ready to transition to that Consolidated Fire District number one as well. So. Any, anybody that has uh, um, 18 years of age is what we ask. Um, if you're 18 years old and you want to serve your community, come down and we will we will help you fulfill that uh, goal. I th that's really helpful. Thank you. And all, all I would say alongside that is as someone who lives miles, <coughs> literally miles away from a fire hydrant, and and that's where that's how rural people. Uh, exist. It's a risk you take, and especially knowing uh, the big farms we have out in Douglas County. It, it's not just their house they're worried about. It's their outbuildings that are full of tens or hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars worth of equipment. Um, the work that those folks know how hard you all have worked to provide this uh, new and and better service, but. I'm, I'm really grateful for the hard work you've done. It's, it's, a, it's phenomenal what's been accomplished. And I'm sure it feels like a lifetime, but it's been in a relatively short time. So thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner. Chief, I know you called it a broad overview, but it, it was certainly detailed for us. I mean, I know you've spent a ton of time working on it and uh, just really appreciate all the dedication to it. The vision that you two have had from early on is just really exceptional. And it is hard work bringing a vision to, to fruition. And, and that is what you both have done. And you've done it with great departments and, and great divisions now working for you. And I'm so happy to hear that our county staff has been able to be helpful to you. So I appreciate the report. I appreciate what you do. And 
and uh, just thank you. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you, Chief Snodgrass, uh, Chief Baxter. I, I know that we've had conversations uh, the last couple of years, so it's, it's great to finally see us at this point, and uh, it's really exciting. And I know that um, people who've reached out to me um, in the townships that are affected um, have been really interested in, you know, thoughts about it, but also pretty excited that they think it's going to allow for more volunteers and, you know, um, improve services. So they, they are happy. They're excited. Um, please tell Chief uh, Filkins and Chief Riley, thank you for, for all of their work. Cause I know there's a lot of, a lot of interaction with the townships and, and everybody to make sure we can get everybody on board with this uh, transition. Cause as you said, change isn't easy. And this is, this is a big change. Um, like Commissioner Thelman said, you know, people out here realize how, how important the services that you provide with volunteers and, uh, you know, you're really taking it up um, to a much higher level with the volunteer fire department. So it's, it's exciting and we're happy for you. And, and thanks to all the county staff that was involved. Um, and thanks again. I love your artwork. So that's, and you didn't, you didn't tell everybody what the 343 stands for. Oh, wow. For those who yes, don't, the, may not know. The, the 343 on there is the 343 firefighters that uh, perished in the 9-11 Trade Center. Um, that's that's just something you'll see on a, on a lot of department uh, um, clothing and, and trucks and stuff like that is recognition of those 343. Thanks. Thank you, commissioners, for entertaining us tonight, and we appreciate all your work and, and efforts into helping making this a success. And any questions, please feel free to reach out, and um, we will get you an answer. Sounds great. Thank you. Commissioner, Sarah, if there's nothing else, we will adjourn until our 530 business meeting. All right. We are adjourned. See you at 530.